we're back at it again with Miraculous Ladybug Redesigns. It's been a minute and I know technically I should be drawing Nino, but like season 5 has ended. Kinda. Not sure why this episode came out after the season finale, but go off, I guess. Uh, but during the final episode, it was shown that Lila found the butterfly miraculous. Not 100% sure how she did it. Uh, now, it's no secret I love villains, I love their looks, their chaotic energy, not to mention when the show calls for it, the songs. So I couldn't help but sit my ass down and redesign Lila and make her a villain suit. <laughs> It'll probably be a while till we see villain Lila, but we all know the suit's gonna be lame. I mean, look at Felix. What the fuck? <laughs> anyway, Lila is a pretty interesting character when the writers choose to remember she exists, and I feel she could have been a much better antagonist than the re unreformed Chloe. Like, I seriously believe the only reason Lila came into existence was to replace Chloe, but due to ya boy Thomas, she was sent to the Shadow Realm till the time called for her, and the time she was called was fun. A little cringe with the lies, but they're all like 14, 15, so, so I can see some of the stuff she said as being believable, but you know, there's nothing about Lila I actually hate. I'm more just confused with her, because I already knew she was going to be the next butterfly wielder. I mean, when Hawk Moth akumatized her, she got pretty close to getting their miraculous, and a lot of season 3 had her working for Gabriel, and she did do a pretty good job at helping him out, not sure why he ditched her, but I feel like she was supposed to take over Felix's role and like steal the miraculous from Gabriel, but you know, she even got close with Chloe, so it wasn't hard to see she was going to be the next wielder. I think the crew just didn't know what to do with her since they had Kagami as Adrian's second love interest along with her mom being involved with Gabriel so there's that and Chloe going back to being the school antagonist along with Felix becoming Gabriel's antagonist which I still think is stupid that should have been Lila's spot it makes so much more sense if you think about it really hard <laughs> but yeah with all that going on they didn't have room for her anymore to be included because most of the season she just appears out of nowhere and then disappears like that. Like, it's very clear they had no idea what to do with her. But I should say, it wasn't until season 5 did she become an actual character to worry about, cause Jesus, her ability to control Chloe to the point of making her the mayor of Paris is crazy. And the fact she's been wearing a disguise all this time, both kinda cool and weird. Cause what was her original goal? Not the side plot season five thing, like her first appearance kind of thing. Like it makes no sense for her to walk up to the school in a completely different appearance than her normal appearance. Like was all this just to get Adrian to be her boyfriend, which I'm pretty sure Lila has zero feelings for him. It's just weird. Like, <laughs> like first appearance Lila is just weird. <laughs> But season 5 Lila is great, and I'm actually looking forward to seeing what's gonna happen. Though I am worried with her going back to the school, it's just gonna backfire with Marinette. I mean, she's gonna know she's Lila. There's only so much a wig and colored contacts can do to a person's appearance. But overall, Lila, I feel, isn't a bad character. Just a very underdeveloped character. And I blame that on the writers, because I feel she could have been better than Chloe if given the time. Because I mean, she was doing a pretty good job halfway through till they chased after Sabrina. Like, why do that? The class already believed you. You didn't need to go and actually talk to her. Feels like they just needed an excuse to have Lila expelled and control Chloe from the shadows, which I guess is okay. Just a weird way to do it. But anyway, let's move on to her 3D model. <laughs> okay, so surprisingly, Lila has two different versions of her model, but all that's really different is the eye color and hair, and I have to say, short hair Lila is best Lila. Like, she is rocking this pixie. Whoever styled this did, like, an amazing job. It looks so much better than half the character's hairstyles, but let's get into her OG self. Cause like, okay, I get why her hair is styled this way. I mean, the first appearance had her turn into Volpina, but I do gotta say best suit design out of everybody. Well, maybe not everybody, but like best design I've seen in a while. <laughs> but yeah, that wig, it is not doing her any favors. Plus you guys know me and the whole like eyebrow thing. It's especially apparent on 3D models, which is why like not a lot of 3D models have like straight cut bangs. You usually like have a side cut or a split down the middle. So you have full, full view of the face. But the three low ponytails is just weird. I think the one in the back could probably be okay. Like it's not super uncommon. It's just the front ones are just so like, why go the extra mile to do that? I'm pretty sure the wig didn't even come styled that way. <laughs> 
But you did it on purpose, why? Now, there's actually nothing super wrong with her 3D model. I mean, she's not Luca level nightmare. She's very much Chloe level in how much effort they put into her. But again, with the light lipstick, what is with Miraculous's design team and light lipstick? Like her skin is dark and already has an orange undertone. So why put her in orange peach light lipstick. It makes her lips look non-existent. She's borderline Luca and it- <laughs> they all are. Everybody has so light lips. Why? Uh, and though she has eyelashes, her liner line could be a bit thicker. Like, it's thicker than Luca's, but the reason Chloe's eyes and Marinette's eyes are a bit less horror inducing is because of how big their liner lines are. So yeah, I think if Lila's liner line was a little bit thicker, it wouldn't be so like off-putting looking at her. Plus like a little editing to her eyelashes. They're kind of wonky. But yeah, that's about it for her 3D model. Like, there's nothing super wrong with it. Obviously, the body type is the same as everybody else's. There's not much going on with this 3D model. It's kind of plain, honestly. Out of everybody else, like, Lila probably has the plainest 3D model. Which is weird to say, considering, like, how big of a step up she's gonna get in season six. But it's like, oh, I guess it kind of makes sense for her character because she is a liar and a plain person at heart. So it's, like, plain 3D model. <laughs> But anyway, let's move on to the design. Yay! <laughs> okay, so fake Lila, aka just Lila's outfit, isn't bad. Like, it's cute because rompers are back in style, but I don't know. It's kind of meh. Like, unlike Chloe, she's not suffering from looking like a high-class soccer mom, but her colors and pattern choice just clash in a way I can't truly explain because you'd think polka dots and leather would work because of the rockabilly look, but when it's not the typical black, white, or red, it's just weird. But I do want to point out that her overall style is somewhat reminiscent to Chloe's concept art. I mean, they gave her sunglasses in her final design page, and speaking of concept art, I was honestly surprised I couldn't find anything for Lila. Usually the team has something, but after not finding anything, Lila is kind of starting to feel like a first draft design. But I will say I love her fall color looks, like it really matches my redesign Adrian's look. I don't know if you guys remember, but I did do fall colors for redesign Adrian, mostly to be an opposite to Gabriel's more cold winter vibes. You know, the whole metaphor that like Gabriel is still in mourning, he's cold and closed off, whereas Adrian is moving on from his mourning, but is still semi in mourning, you know? But yeah, so for the redesign, I decided to completely scrap this look, cause I mean, her Cerise outfit is the exact same outfit, but in a different color. And I kinda wanted that outfit style to, to be her personal style, while her fake persona is a mix of other people's styles. I like to think fake Lila did a ton of research on the class classmates in Adrian's school and decided to mimic Alia, Chloe, and Marinette as they're the only girls Adrian hangs out with or has known for a long time. So the headband and glasses and pants are a nod to Alia, giving her a more casual vibe, along with giving her a non-threatening look due to her glasses. For Chloe's side, it's the overlap tops, long dark sleeves, and picnic pattern crop bodice to give off that high fashion vibe, along with a cold fall feel due to her colors being more muted. Her makeup and shoe choice is also a nod to Chloe, showing she knows Adrian is closest to her or was at the time and wants to take her place even if she isn't 100% sure where their relationship really is. The Marinette part isn't actually anything Marinette is wearing because I haven't done the redesign but also because I know Marinette style and Lila style will never cross paths with each other. <laughs> But anyway, it's more her personality. I like to think Lila adopted parts of Marinette's personality to have the class like her just as much as the class likes Marinette. Because even though Lila's look is based around the people Adrian is close to, and before you all come at me, I know Alia is closer to Marinette, but due to Nino and Alia being a thing, I'm pretty sure she's more involved with Adrian than the show lets us believe. But anyway, with her trying to make herself more to Adrian's liking, she still has to have a good enough personality that he and all the other students would like. Hence why she's a adopted some of Marinette's personality traits, but obviously not all of them, as lying is second nature to Lila. Still wish she had picked a different name because that's just like silly irony, I guess. But that really can't be turned off. That's too ingrained into her personality. Like, I'm pretty sure Lila's been lying from day one and just kept going. Uh, as for the things that are hints to Lila's actual self is her wig color and her nail color. 
You'll see later, but I made Lila's wig color similar to her actual civilian self's leather jacket. Oh, and I did go back and change her hair to being down, just so it's not super obvious she's Volpina, because all I'd really change for Volpina's look is give her an extra long high ponytail and make her tough similar to her OG wig style. But yeah, I also wanted her hair to look like a possible wig, so I did do an ombre effect with a much more saturated color, because I have a few wigs myself, and the only way you can tell sometimes is the colors being too perfect and the shininess of it. <laughs> and I'm not sure how much money Lila has for a real realistic wig she can just toss in the trash later. I don't understand why she did that. Just put it in your bag. And she didn't even toss it in all the way. Like she didn't even try to hide it. Anyway, this fake version of Lila is all for Adrian. I'd like to think basically my version of Miraculous that she's a fusion of Marinette and Chloe's love for Adrian, a mix of a highly skilled stalker that can actually talk to him and a weird, sweet, almost pushy side. Like she's that level of crazy that she seems sane, but due to all the ladybug and chat noir, being Marinette and Adrian keep biting her in the butt since she has no idea who they actually are. And I can see it driving her wild that Marinette and Adrian aren't charmed by her anymore and she doesn't understand why. <laughs> but also keeps looking for ways to get rid of Marinette and get closer to Adrian. I like to think that she's convinced herself that Marinette is the main reason that Adrian is no longer charmed by her and does whatever she can to get closer to Adrian even if she has to force it. I.e. snitching about everything that goes on at school to his dad for some one-on-one -on -one time with Adrian and if it were me I'd have Lila take over Felix's arc or better yet team up with him to get the monarch miraculous even have her find out about Gimme and have her deepest wish be to make Adrian hers because so far Lila doesn't have much of a motive besides destroying Marinette which wouldn't it make more sense to have Adrian fall in love with you and break Marinette's heart like I don't know the level of destroying that Lila wants to go here if like the main goal has always been Adrian you know, maybe she could add on to her wish that like Adrian falls in love with her and all of Paris hates Marinette. <laughs> anyway, I'm off topic, but I seriously love this version of fake Lila, but I really want to talk about real Lila, aka Cerise. So let's go. Uh, before we get started, let me just gush for a quick bit because, uh, Real Lila, aka Cerise's hair and her eye color is the best. She looks so good with this style. Like y'all know me, I have a weird issue with the miraculous hairstyles because they're all kind of the same texture wise. But I mean, Rose basically has the same cut, but she's got it styled kind of like an emo comb over. So yeah, but I seriously do love this. I think it's the cutest version that Lila has ever been. I think this hairstyle would have been great in the beginning, but I understand why it's used now. But I feel like I was cheated out of like the perfect Lila design, you know? But anyway, yeah, again, the outfit, like even though the colors are way better, like darker hues really work for Lila, it, but it's still the same damn outfit she's worn to the other schools. So like what? Did Lila buy the same romper but in different colors? And just why? Like is Lila gonna go back to school in just this same outfit? Like just because it's a darker version it doesn't mean no one's gonna know who you are. This isn't miraculous where you just put on an eye mask and everyone suddenly can't tell who you are. Oh wait, shit. Well, maybe the class will just get smooth brain and forget what Lila even looked like. But yeah, the outfit has the same issue as the last one, minus the colors. Because yeah, the colors do work and look nice, but it's still a weird fit for this particular 14 to 15 year old with the added bonus that she lies that she's a movie star, rich, and flies all over the world. Like there's thousands of rompers with a more glam style or even like a more high fashion looking vibe. Yet Lila picked something you could probably get at Target right now. And yeah, I know I put her in a more relaxed style for her fake persona, but that's kind of the thing now as well. Like casual chic, which is probably my current favorite fashion. Like casual chic has really made a comeback and I'm here for it. Like retro and alternative all the way, but for the defaults of the world, it looks the best. Anyway, as much as I do kind of love this fit for Cerise, it's not giving bad bitch vibes like the hair is. Like hair's great, but the rest, nah. So for the redesign, I gave her a half sleeve black shirt with a relaxed neckline, you know, way more open than her turtleneck long sleeve. I also gave her a couple loose black chains just cause. Uh, I did in fact keep her leather jacket, but made it more red as like a weird symbol for her hate for Ladybug and her ties to when she was hoaxer and got all of Gabriel's secrets. Though now I'm not sure what she's gonna do with all those secrets cause dead. 
but we'll see come season six. Anyway, the rest of the design, I put her in a long high-waisted pencil skirt with vertical stripes. There's not much behind why I did it, more just because I wanted to give her some kind of pattern, but after working on it and looking at it for such a long time, I kind of got reminded of my redesigned Natalie skirt, and the more I think about it, Lila and Natalie are both ridiculously smart, and it makes me wonder if Lila will grow up to be a more ruthless version of Natalie in the future. Fun things to think about. And finally, her shoes. I thought about changing them, but figured Lila would be the type to stick with one pair of shoes at all times due to hopping from mom to mom, which I just gotta say is kind of weird, but like, I try to rationalize it by, by thinking her bio mom got divorced and is now in a lesbian relationship, but you know, to cope with the random three moms, this is what I had to do. But side note, Holy hell, Lila can sign? That's amazing. I swear, Lila is weirdly cool in the things she can do. Like, if she just didn't lie so much and act so cringe, I'm sure she'd be doing all the things that she lies about. Well, maybe not all. Like, meeting a prince is kind of out there, but her mom's a reporter, so maybe... And we're just gonna ignore the medical stuff, because clearly nothing's really wrong with Lila, but you know. But yeah, oh, the brooch. Yeah, I recolored the brooch and made it a bit bigger. It always kind of bugged me that it was so small when unactivated. Like, I get it's easier to hide, but we know the miraculous changed color when inactive, so what was the point? Like, I understand the colors do change depending on the wielder, but I think it'd be kind of cool with Lila's ability to lie and like adapt to being a different person that like the jewel color constantly changes, you know? But that's just me. Oh, I almost forgot. Even though I love Lila's hair, I still wanted to do something to it, so I added a blonde streak. You know, not something too out of the box or crazy, you know, just enough to show some rebellious attitude and personality without being too noticeable. Does that make sense? Anyway, I love this design so much. I think it's just enough to scream real Lila, aka Cerise, and just, uh. Anyway, let's move on to the showstopper. I think you're gonna like it. Okay, in case some of y'all are new or don't remember, I decided that every villain wielder would be transformed to look more monstrous and even grow bigger and stronger to showcase that. So that's why villain Lila, aka the monarch, yeah, lazy name, I know, and before you all start typing, the reason I went with the monarch is mostly to do with Lila's colors being similar to one, so I figured why not, plus she's not, plus she's not actually a monarch butterfly, but a moth mimicking one, hence all the fur and moth antenna. Cause I mean, metaphorically, Lila is a moth trying to be a butterfly. She's trying to live a big, important life and has found ways to achieve some things through lies and mimicking others. Also, I think the name suits her as it's also another word for a royal, which I'm sure Lila would just love to be. Uh, some of the redesign reflects the basic of, of both names meaning, like the constant overuse of the monarch's wings, but also the silhouette of her outfit giving an almost regal appearance. I even put three teardrop dots on her head to mimic a crown and I'm kind of all over the place. Ugh, there's so much to talk about. Okay, so for the redesign, I did make her more monstrous or I guess more Tokyo Mew Mew monster based, but I gave her pointed ears and fused her mask to her eyes along with her hair now being fused to her face along with moth antennas. <laughs> A good chunk of her villain suit is based around redesigned Gabriel's suit and as an added bonus, we know she knows what Gabe's full villain suit looks like before anyone else. So she's been thinking about it for a while, so I like to think redesigned Lila subconsciously thought about Gabe, which influenced her, her villain's suit design, though unlike Gabe, isn't a couture fashion designer, but a 14 slash 15 year old girl with a lying problem. So you can imagine the kind of things she thinks about on the daily. Like, Lila is probably the most creative person socially, I guess? I've yet to see her do anything creative besides Marinette's mom's calligraphy class. So yeah, she's way more flashy with her suit, aka huge wings for the brooch, a fur trim hoodie with a undershaw, with monarch wings for the pattern and giant fur sleeves, and for the more literal side of bugs in general, her neck and corset belt and those little nubs are all made to mimic an actual moth monarch's appearance. I kind of wish I'd gone harder on the bug design, but I like to think Lila's personality overpowers some of the more realistic parts of her suit, hence why she has no wings. And as for her skirt, I know it's hard to see, but it is three layers. And in case no one's noticed, I did a lot of threes and that's mostly to do with Lila's three bracelets and moms. There's theories out there that each bracelet is a hint to her three personas and moms, but numerology has number three's positive traits, be popular, friendly, passionate, and versatile. Like all things Lila is, though her popularity comes from her lies, but still it fits pretty well. So I tried to keep a lot of Lila's designs in threes. As for 
for the pants part of her design, I just pretty much copied redesigned Gabriel's suit, but I did add fur ankle cuffs, and instead of giving her regular shoes, I decided to give her tiptoe shoes to make her even taller than she already is. Plus, off topic a bit, but I just realized something. So we know Gabriel and Natalie could wear their Miraculous for pretty much however long they wanted, because they're adults, and Adrian and Marinette were stuck to a time limit until they did all that training, but like, this is Lila's first Miraculous, so is she also gonna be stuck on a time limit? Or what? <laughs> well, I guess we'll have to see in season six. But anyway, uh, you won't see it till later, but I did add the moth dust, though I made it black instead of the yellow. It gave it a more evil, corrupt vibe, and that's all I pretty much got, because I mean, overall, I really love this design, and I know I should have done something different with her hair, but with Marinette and Adrian having never seen Lila without her wig, and the fact I now have the villains go full monster, I didn't see that much of a reason to, but anyway, I'm super happy and proud, and now I have all these ideas for Shadybug and Emo Noir, and Felix, but next video won't be them, because as we've all seen Tuesday, Maman was finally revealed, which I should say I really wish Viv would keep some characters and designs a secret until the episode actually drops. Like, how unexcited would we all have been if Titan Loose was posted before the finale? Obviously, that's a really big reveal, but you get my point. <laughs> But yeah, Maman was posted and I have been meaning to reimagine him, but someone else has to come before him. And that person is... Leviathan! That's right, ruler of the sea and son of envy, is finally ready to be seen and you'll fully understand why I put them before Maman. So look out for that and remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Really helps out the channel and me. Uh, I hope you all have a super fantastic day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!